This is a presentation on lobster draft addendum 27 on increasing protection of the Gulf of Maine, Georgia's bank spawning stock. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission is currently seeking public comment on this proposed action. This presentation will include background information on the draft addendum, the action timeline, a review of the proposed management options in the document, and information on how to provide public comment. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission was formed in 1942 and is comprised of the 15 states on the Atlantic coast. The states of Maine through Virginia participate in the management of American lobster. The Atlantic Coastal Fisheries Cooperative Management Act charges the commission to create fishery management plans to provide for the conservation of coastal fishery resources. Under this act, the commission has regulatory authority in state waters. The Lobster Management Board works through quarterly meetings where each state is represented by three commissioners and each state gets one vote in the decision-making process. This slide shows the timeline of this action's development, starting with the reinitiation of work on Draft Addendum 27 in February 2021, after work was paused while the board addressed other priorities. In 2021 and 2022, the Bland Development Team developed this draft addendum with guidance from the Management Board. In January of 2023, the board approved the draft addendum for public comment. The public comment period is ongoing now. In May, the board will meet to select a management program and consider final approval of Addendum 27. For additional background, the board originally initiated Draft Addendum 27 in August of 2017 in response to concerns about decreasing trends in Maine's Larval Settlement Survey and the potential for future declines in re recruitment and landings. At that time, the addendum focused on standardizing management measures across the Lobster Conservation and Management Areas, or LCMAs, within the stock. Then Draft Addendum 27 was put on hold for a few years as the board had to prioritize work related to right whale risk reduction efforts. In February 2021, after approving the 2020 benchmark stock assessment, the board reinitiated work on this addendum. Trends in lobster stock indices in the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank have continued to be of concern. Settlement surveys over the past five years have remained below the 75th percentile of their time series, and there have also been declines in recruit abundance in the ventless trap survey and trawl surveys for the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank stock since the 2020 stock assessment. This figure shows the Gulf of Maine Young of Year indices through 2021. Young of year indices have continued to show unfavorable conditions in the Gulf of Maine Georgia's bank stock. The red points on the right side are the values for 2019 through 2021. This figure shows the Gulf of Maine recruit abundance indices from the trawl survey through 2021, which have also started to show declines in some areas. The red points on the right side of each box are the values for 2019 through 2021. The board provided a new objective statement for the focus of the document after receiving the results of the 2020 stock assessment and acknowledging continued low settlement indices and declines in recruit abundance for the Gulf of Maine Georgia's bank stock. The objective is to consider a trigger mechanism such that upon reaching the trigger, measures would be automatically implemented to increase the overall protection of spawning stock biomass of the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's bank stock. In addition to options that aim to increase the overall protection of spawning stock biomass, the draft addendum also includes options that would standardize some existing management measures within the stock. Currently, there are some discrepancies within measures in different management areas within the stock, which creates challenges for stock assessment, law enforcement, and interstate commerce. The proposed options aim to improve or resolve some of these issues. Now we'll review the proposed options in the addendum for public comment. The proposed options in Draft Addendum 27 are separated into two issues. Issue 1 addresses the standardization of a subset of management measures within Lobster Conservation and Management Areas, or LCMAs, and across the Gulf of Maine Georgia's bank stock. Issue 2 considers implementing biological management measures that are expected to provide increased protection of the spawning stock biomass, either using a trigger mechanism or a predetermined schedule to implement measures. The options under issue one are A, status quo, or B, which would implement some standardized measures upon approval of the addendum. Under option B, there are four sub-options to define what those standardized measures would include. 
From these sub-options, the board can select as many as desired, depending on which issues they want to address. These are the four sub-options under option B. B1 would implement standardized measures within Gulf of Maine Georges Bank stock areas to the most conservative measure where there are inconsistencies between state and federal regulations. This would mean the maximum gauge size in Outer Cape Cod would be six and three quarters of an inch for both state and federal permit holders. And the V-notch possession definition would prohibit harvest of female lobsters with a V-shaped notch greater than one eighth of an inch. Option B2 is to standardize the V-notch requirement across LCMAs such that V-notching would be mandatory for all acres in LCMAs 1, 3, and Outer Cape Cod. B3 is to standardize the V-notch possession definition of 1 eighth of an inch with or without cetal hairs for LCMAs 1, 3, and Outer Cape Cod. And B4 is to standardize regulations across LCMAs 1, 3, and Outer Cape Cod to limit the issuance of trap tags to equal the harvester trap tag allocation. This would mean no surplus tags would be automatically issued until trap losses occur and are documented. Issue two focuses on implementing management measures to increase protection of spawning stock biomass. Specifically, the options consider changes to the minimum and maximum gauge sizes and the corresponding escape vent sizes that are expected to both increase the spawning stock biomass and result in the minimum gauge sizes meeting or exceeding the size at which 50% of the stock reaches maturity. The vent sizes would change according to the final minimum gauge size implemented for each area. There are two possible approaches for implementing management changes under issue two. The first is option B, which would establish a trigger mechanism that would result in predetermined management measures being triggered when there's a certain amount of decline in the trigger index. The proposed trigger index that would be used is based on multiple recruit abundance indices. The second approach is applied in option C, which would establish a predetermined schedule for future changes to the management measures. These are the three options under issue two. A is status quo, where there would be no additional changes to management measures. Option B is that gauge size changes would be triggered by a certain percent decline in the trigger index. If option B is selected, then the board would also need to select the trigger level as well as the management measures to be implemented. Option C considers establishing a predetermined schedule for implementing changes to the gauge and escape vent sizes. Under option B, the board would establish a trigger mechanism whereby predetermined management measures would be implemented upon reaching a defined trigger level based on observed changes in recruit abundance indices compared to the reference level of the trigger index. When the defined trigger level is reached, a predetermined set of management measures selected by the board would be implemented for the following fishing year. If option B is chosen, these are the options for the trigger level. Trigger option one is a 32% decline in the trigger index. This means if the index declines from the reference level by 32%, it would trigger the implementation of the management measures selected by the board. Trigger option two is a 45% decline in the trigger index, meaning if the trigger index declines from the reference level by 45%, it would trigger the implementation of the management measures selected by the board. These trigger levels were chosen because they represent changes in abundance that are significant based on the reference values from the 2020 stock assessment. It is important to note that when the board selects a final management program, it has the ability to choose any trigger level that falls within the range of 32% to 45% decline in the index. This figure shows the trigger index calculated through 2021 with the available data. The top left panel shows the combined index that would be used to determine when the trigger level is reached. Each of the survey indices that go into the trigger index are shown individually in the other panels. These include the fall and spring trawl survey recruit indices and the ventless trap recruit index. The two horizontal lines on each graph represent the proposed trigger levels of 32% and 45%. This figure shows what the proposed trigger levels look like in comparison to the reference abundance curve from the stock assessment. 
The dark blue curve is the abundance of lobster in the Gulf of Maine Georges Bank stock over time. And the black diamond in the upper right corner is the average estimated abundance from 2016 to 2018. This is the value called the reference abundance, which was used to determine the current stock status in the 2020 stock assessment. As mentioned, the proposed trigger values are meant to approximate declines in abundance from the reference abundance level. The proposed trigger levels are shown on this graph by the horizontal yellow dashed lines. The uppermost line represents the 32% decrease in abundance from the reference abundance level, and the lower yellow line represents a 45% decline. If option B is selected, the board will also select biological management measures that would be automatically implemented in the Gulf of Maine Georges Bank stock when the trigger level is reached. There are two options for management measures. Measures option one would change the gauge and escape vent sizes in a single year, and measures option two would involve a series of gradual changes to the gauge and escape vent sizes over several years. These are the current management measures in the management areas of the Gulf of Maine Georges Bank stock. This table lists the management measures under measures option one that would be automatically implemented when the trigger, trigger point is reached. Changes in each year are shown in bold and under measures option one, when the established trigger level is reached, the minimum gauge size for LCMA one would increase from the current size of three and one quarter inches to three and three eighths inches for the following fishing year. The escape vent size in LCMA one would be adjusted corresponding with the minimum gauge size change. Additionally, the maximum gauge size in LCMA-3 and Outer Cape Cod would decrease to six inches. The proposed increase to the minimum gauge size in Area 1 is expected to increase the proportion of the population that's protected from being harvested by the fishery before being able to reproduce. The proposed decreases to the maximum gauge sizes in Area 3 and Outer Cape Cod are expected to enhance resiliency by placing forever protections on a small proportion of the population, including larger lobsters of both sexes. The proposed gauge and vent size changes are expected to maintain similar retention rates of legal lobsters and protection of sublegal sizes as the current gauge and vent size combination. The vent size is consistent with the current vent size used in the Southern New England management areas for the same minimum gauge size of three and three eighths inches. This table lists the management measures under measures option two that would be automatically implemented when the trigger point is reached. Changes in each year are shown in bold. Under measures option two, when the trigger level is reached, a series of gradual changes in gauge sizes for the areas in the Gulf of Maine Georges Bank stock would be initiated. Changes would occur in every other year. The minimum gauge size would change in increments of 1 16th of an inch and the maximum gauge size would change in increments of one quarter of an inch. The gauge size changes that would be implemented at each step and the final gauge sizes that would be reached for each area are shown in the table. The escape vent size in LCMA1 would be adjusted once when the final minimum gauge size is implemented to maintain protection of sublegal sub sizes. It should be noted that the final measures in this option are the same as in the previous option. The difference is that the changes in this option occur gradually as opposed to all at once. The last option under issue two is option C. This option considers implementing gradual changes to the gauge and escape vent sizes on an established schedule. There are three steps for proposed changes and this table shows the measures that would change in each step in bold font. The first set of measures would be implemented no later than the 2026 fishing year. In the first step, there would be an increase in the minimum gauge size in area one by 1 16th of an inch to 3 and 5 16 of an inch, and a decrease in the maximum gauge size in LCMA 3 and Outer Cape Cod to 6 and a half inches. Then, one year after that, there would be a decrease to the maximum gauge size in LCMA 3 and Outer Cape Cod to 6 and 1 quarter inches and no change in LCMA1. The third and final step would occur one year later, and it increases the minimum gauge size in LCMA1 to 3 and 3 eighths of an inch, and decreases the maximum gauge size in LCMA3 and Outer Cape Cod to six inches. The vent size in LCMA1 would also be adjusted in the third step.
The full draft addendum document is available on the Commission's website at www.asmfc.org slash about hyphen us slash public hyphen input. There are several ways the public can provide input on this draft addendum. The Commission has scheduled seven public hearings to gather input on a draft addendum 27. If you'd like to provide comments in person, you can attend any of the virtual public hearings or attend an in-person hearing in Maine or New Hampshire. For more information on the public hearings, visit www.asmfc.org calendar or contact Caitlin Starks, Fishery Management Plan Coordinator at cstarks at asmfc.org. If you would like to submit written comments on this action, you can send them by mail or email to the addresses listed here. Comments can be emailed to comments at asmfc.org using the subject line Lobster Draft Addendum 27. You can also mail comments to the Commission's office at the following address. 1050 North Highland Street, Suite 200A-N, Arlington, Virginia 22201, 